Overall, education is necessary for growth. And if you are not growing every day, you are going to be stuck in your own jail cell called life. So I challenge you to keep learning and growing for yourself, your life, and your freedom. This is Tasha Blasi, integrative fertility coach, patient advocate, and mom to two very expensive children. I went through 10 rounds of IVF, so you will never have to. On this podcast, I will give you the answers to what is keeping you from getting or staying pregnant. This is the FU Project. Fertilitites Unite. I don't advertise this, but I was in jail for about five years. It was debilitating, really, as you can imagine, um, not being able to do anything you wanted. Couldn't see my friends or family without a feeling of sadness and loss of pride in myself. I wasn't able to eat or drink anything that I wanted. Everything was just tasted terrible that I had to eat. I wasn't able to have sex with my husband, right? If I wanted to, it had to be scheduled. I was really ashamed of my imprisonment. And, you know, I felt really sad and angry about the choices that I made that that put me there. But the thing was, I felt that so many more people were deserving of this imprisonment than I was because they made much worse choices than I ever did. And then, of course, I felt guilty for wanting other people to suffer like I was. For five years, my life was consumed with this IVF imprisonment. It dictated my schedule, my mood, my life, and it had complete power over me. So today, knowing that so many of you are also in IVF jail, I am going to give you the three keys to unlocking your jail cell today. I must warn you, it takes a brave woman, a very brave woman to escape from IVF jail. Are you ready? Okay, I know you are. The first key to unlocking your IVF jail cell is to realize that your jail cell is not your worst nightmare, but your answer to making your dreams come true. You do not have to do IVF. You get to do IVF. IVF is not an imprisonment, but a choice that we get to make to provide us a beautiful paved path that we get to take to make our family dreams come true. I challenge you to stop feeling sorry for yourself for having to do any sort of fertility treatments and be really thankful that those treatments exist. I, for example, would have never been able to get pregnant without fertility treatments. Brian is my husband, and he has low sperm count. He had no idea until we spent a year trying to have a baby. I was devastated to hear this news because it meant the super weird scientific conception called IVF. And he was devastated because he could have been a lot less careful in college. I begged for IUI instead. It seemed less awful. Which, by the way, is a huge misconception because you have to do just as many appointments. You usually have the same injections and medicines that you have to take. But the success round is around 8% each time you do IUI with with it getting to about a 35% success rate after the third time. And then after the third time, the success rate actually drops again. But IUI was not an option for us. It takes approximately 40 million sperm to have a child naturally, 10 million sperm to have a chance at IUI, and Brian had 4 million sperm. That's right, kids. Your abstinence campaign in high school was a lie. It doesn't take just one. So I spent eight of the 10 rounds of IVF very angry. Why just eight of the 10? Well, You know, the first round, of course, I was super cocky. It wasn't my issue. I was 33. So it was, of course, going to work. And then the third round after Hudson was born, I was also super cocky again that, of course, it was going to work because I just had a child. So the other eight were just a series of me getting slapped around. Right. Like, like someone's jail bitch. Anyway, the truth was that my attitude should have been gratitude. 
And no, I didn't know that rhymed until I just said that. I want to slap myself thinking about how badly I always felt for having to do IVF. It is a solution to a problem that we had and a solution that I had really easy access to. It was a short drive to many fertility clinics in my area. I had options. And when I decided to travel for my 10th round, I had the opportunity to pay for a flight and had a nice family vacation. Yes, it was time consuming. Time, by the way, is my acronym for our most precious and limited resources that seem to get totally trashed (laughs) during the fertility journey. It stands for time, investment, which is money, mental health, and energy. So yes, it was time consuming, but it was my only way that I was going to get pregnant. Now, don't get me wrong. I would have happily adopted as well, and I was grateful to know that that was also an option. But getting to do IVF was another available option that could allow me to reach my family goals, and it worked for us. If you have access to IVF, that is really special. I have a friend that lives in a country where there are no IVF clinics. She would actually have to travel to another country to do it. And I remember talking to a woman who could not tell her family she was doing IVF due to religious reasons. I'm not saying her family would look down on her and tell her that she's having a fake soulless baby like some religions. I am saying that she would no longer have a family to be ashamed of her robot baby. So if you do have access to IVF and you have a support system that understands that the child that was supposed to show up always does, and IVF babies are not missing any DNA, nor do they run on electrical outlets, then you are very, very blessed to have IVF in your life the way that you do. The second key to unlocking your jail cell is to realize that there is no lock on the door. You just open it. Before women work with me, they brag about all the things that they are not doing because of IVF. It sounds awful, and they don't feel happy not doing all those things anyway. Listen, I have an entire lesson on how to most naturally balance hormones, reduce inflammation, and of course, nutrition and all that stuff is is a part of it. But unless you are of a very specific case, you do not need to get rid of everything that you love to do and eat and drink. And even for those that do have an issue that makes them more prone to inflammation and therefore needs to be more careful about the things they consume, and by the way, when I say consume, I mean through all senses, not just food, I tell her to just rein it in for the three months, or excuse me, not three months, three weeks before an egg retrieval until the egg retrieval, and then three weeks before the embryo transfer until the pregnancy test. Other than that, we base the decluttering on just what is showing up with her at the time. So yes, have your wine. Just make it organic so you'll feel better. (laughs) But also, because coffee, teas, and, and grapes, which of course wine is made of, are all really heavily treated with pesticides. And have your coffee. As long as it's organic and you know it doesn't interfere with your sleep, go for that one cup a day. I would argue, however, that caffeine, even in the morning, can play a part to imbalance hormones throughout the day, and especially at night, and then, of course, affects your sleep, which unbalances your hormones. So that is one where, unless you know for sure that it is not interfering, I would try to switch to half-calf or just pure, what I do is organic decaf um, espresso. So it's nice and strong, but... um, Without, I, I, I'm very sensitive to caffeine. It definitely interferes with my sleep. Also, eat like a responsible adult and then indulge when out at a party or holiday. And I say responsible adult because some things that adults choose to consume should not be called food, much less something that an adult who has buying power should ever choose to buy. And, you know, obvious process stuff. Okay, a little bit off topic. But I, I just have to, I have to go off for a second. Whenever I'm on an airplane, I, and I hear adults ordering apple juice, I, I don't, I don't know what to do with that. And no, they don't hand it off to a child. 
I actually check. Okay, and this is where the mindset coaches that are in the program would say, Tasha, you do you best. Don't worry about how anyone else does it. And I know, so that's why I'm just saying it here and not in front of them. But what I want to say is like, what's wrong with you? You are an adult ordering apple juice. First of all, that popular apple juice brand is made from concentrate from specific countries that are allowed to basically use poison for concentrate. Okay, it's a known fact. It is poison. And secondly, there is more sugar in apple juice than in soda. And third, you're a fucking adult. Put down the apple juice. Okay, back to the topic. I have some client stories to share with you that will help you understand what I mean by there is no lock on your jail cell. You just have to open it. My one client had a a failed transfer and, of course, was devastated and asked me if she should go on antidepressants. Our conversation went something like this. Have you ever been on antidepressants before? She said no. Okay, why do you want to go on them? Because I'm just so stressed all the time. I don't want to feel this way. I'm sad. I just, I I can't do anything. I can't take anything. I just, I just want to feel normal. So I asked her, well, what did you do to relieve your stress and what could you do that you can't do before IVF? And she said, well, I would have a glass of wine and smoke some pot. So I said, okay, are, do you feel like you're in danger of yourself or others? No. Do you think of hurting yourself or others? No. So then I didn't, I, so that, that's where I knew she really, you know, we could, we could have other alternatives. Otherwise, talk to your professional. You definitely need an antidepressant. Are you doing, my last question, are you doing my morning, you know, routine? It's actually a, a whole day routine, but I just call it morning and evening routine. She said, well, you know, kind of. I said, okay. Of course you need to ask a doctor, but I do not think you need antidepressants. Instead, I would drink wine and smoke pot. She was stunned that I said that. But it makes sense. Antidepressants, and and, and again, as long as you're not in harm of yourself or others, antidepressants take a while to figure out. This isn't a a quick fix by any means, even, even though extremely effective when needed. And I knew that she was planning on doing another transfer in the next couple months. So this would delay it, which, of course, could make things worse. Plus, I knew her well, and her anxiety, frustration, and sadness was something that I've seen many times before on on others. The immediate quick fix was her, the immediate quick fix was for her to open up her jail cell, have the wine, smoke some pot, and then I worked with her on the foundational tools that feel like an antidepressant that you have access to any time. I linked her to my lesson on that routine and included my hacks to your most naturally balanced you and gave her exercises for breathing breaks during the day. Similar story at another client, another failed transfer. She was, of course, devastated. She told me how she didn't want to eat, go out, have sex with her partner. She couldn't get out of her own way. She couldn't get out of her funk. She was worried that she was also not making her partner happy. Uh, because her partner was doing all these things for her while she was down, and that was making her even more upset that she didn't want to do anything, and, you know, her partner was helping her, and all this guilt. So my first question to her was, are you ready to feel better? Now, this seems like a silly question, but it's really very important because after a failed transfer, you're supposed to be sad. And I wanted her to be able to take the time to be sad and angry and frustrated because it is sad and ang- anger inducing <laughs> and frustrating. So she said she was ready to feel better. And then I asked if she was doing the daily routine that I created for her. And of course she said no. I immediately knew her prescription. The first thing that I want you to do, I said to her, was write a quick note to your partner tonight, just a quick post it thanking her for being there for you. Okay, I figured that this little act of acknowledgement was going to go a long way. For her, it doesn't take much out of her to do it, and for her partner to receive it will have a huge impact. Next, I asked her, do you like having sex with her? And she was like, oh my gosh, yes. I go, okay, then I want you to have sex tonight. Don't think about it. Just do it. (laughs) 
and you must do the morning and evening routine, and you must take a walk once a day. The walk thing, I well, everybody should take a walk once a day, but I knew how, how therapeutic walking was to her. So that's why I also added that in. So these are just two of the hundreds of stories that I can share with how to most naturally help yourself. You have to start with quick wins, easy things to do to make you immediately feel like yourself again and not like you're stuck in IVF jail. And then, those are, those are quick fixes. Those are not long-term. Then you need to do the foundational work to be a better problem solver. Do you see how I said that? It's not the foundational work to most naturally balance your hormones. That all works together. It's about being a better problem solver and the foundational tools that go with it. Your problems are never going to go away. And in fact, when you have a baby, your problems get much, much worse and your anxiety gets worse too. So my mama, use this time to be the best you and the best problem solver and the best mom possible before your baby arrives. And the final key to unlocking your jail cell is looking at your past as a very expensive and valuable education that made you much wiser today. Anyone who has not had proper training in emotional and physical decluttering and mindset typically thinks about their past in two ways. First, why did I allow that when I know better? And second, why do things keep on happening to me? Or why do things like this keep on happening to me? I want to spend an entire episode on the past, shoulda, woulda, coulda, all that, because this comes up often and, and it could be quite toxic. But here's a quick overview on how to start viewing your past so that you can break free from the chains that are holding you to your jail cell today. The secret is there are no mistakes from your past unless you, unless you sit there stuck and unable to move forward because of them. Otherwise, they're lessons. These lessons are your education for which path to choose next and how to keep moving forward on that path. And like every education, there is a cost. Sometimes the cost is emotional, physical, financial, all three. But the bigger the cost, the better the education will be, typically. So don't waste it. Instead, use it And appreciate what it has taught you. Be proud of getting the education and the result that has made you wiser and stronger. Oh my God, so much stronger today. There seem to be three group of women that I see on a long fertility journey. And what I mean by that are these are the women that have spent years, probably 100,000, multiple miscarriages, multiple chemicals, multiple nothings with no child to show for it. The first group are those that are so excited to talk to me and work with my team and me. They, they tried to figure it on their own and they couldn't, or, or they just learned about me, and they're just ready to hand over all their fertility problems for me to solve. They're very agreeable, happy to do whatever I ask of them. These women understand that their past was a learning process and they are ready for more education without, of course, the additional cost of her continuing to try and do it herself. Next, the second group are those that are not excited to work with me at all, but still do. Because they know they've already tried everything and they've not gotten a child. So they kind of just give up their fertility journey to me. It's like, here, you try. These clients are, I mean, can be so fun because when 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 there's a quick turnaround, if they're a not, if they're not a, and I put this in quotes, by association client. What I mean by that is some women start working with me and they just think they're going to get pregnant by association. I'm working with Tasha. I get to talk to Tasha. I'm just going to get, I'm spontaneously going to get pregnant. I so wish I could do that, but I'm not that good. I cannot get you pregnant. Spoiler alert. I can't do it for you. I can only show you how, and I can't do the work that you need to do to get pregnant. The third group are those that are holding on to their past in the present and cannot work with me 
and my team. They will not work with us. Typically, honestly, we don't even talk to these people. And I just hear about them um, through other people, like either current clients or friends where they're like, I keep on telling my friend to talk to you and she won't. She keeps on saying she's got it. And that is true. If she feels like she's got it, that is not the right fit for the program. But I also know that she probably, of course, I haven't talked to her, She's probably not able to think about her past fertility journey as an education, but as something that is too difficult of a loss to confront. She's looking at this as loss that she can never get back. So, and and here's the thing, when, when you put your energy towards that anger or sadness or stuckness, right? You can't move forward because you're stuck. Because of the past, it's so much wasted energy and wasted education that can be used to quickly propel her forward if she can just choose to get unstuck from her past, if she chooses to unlock the chains that are holding her into in her past, in her present. I will say this often, you do the best with the education and consciousness that you have at the time. I did not make that up, but I don't know where I heard it, but I talk about it all the time. So just as you would never blame a foreigner for coming into the USA and not understanding our slang because they just got here and were never taught, you shouldn't blame yourself for something that you did because of the education that you had at the time. And you clearly did the best with what you did know. This can be a hard concept for some of my new clients when I make some easy suggestions or I'm able to quickly kind of figure out what's probably keeping them from getting or staying pregnant. Um, And so, you know, like here, let's try this the next round. We do this in the first call, I call it the science call. And the woman on the other end, I, I do this call on video, I could tell she's often just like kind of stares back at me. And and then she goes into I I can't I can't believe I I didn't know this before. I can't I can't believe that it it could just be that simple. And I can't believe all I need to, and I and and so I I just stop her and I go I am looking at your case. You did your fertility journey perfectly. I am, this is extremely well researched, extremely well thought out. I'm, I'm guessing you got this recommendation from your other doctor, your OB gave you this or your friend, right? Yes. And I know how much research you've done. I know how much you've done. For you to know what I just told you, it sounds simple, but that means that you would need my degrees. You would need to have done I mean, years of research, about a decade of research to learn the best practices from fertility doctors around the world, you would have to dedicate your life's work to the fertility industry guts and operations. And you would have to have had a hundreds, a hundreds, hundreds of conversations with women about their own fertility issues, as well as nine egg retrievals and 10 transfers of your own. No one is crazy enough to do that except for me. So be proud of yourself for not knowing all this information, but just choosing to work with someone who does. And of course, hearing how much time and effort all of that takes to get to a place where I am today, it usually makes her feel much better about herself and a little sorry for me. Overall, the past is the heaviest clutter to carry around. True freedom comes from seeing every mistake or fail as a lesson to educate you for today and moving forward. Those are the three keys to getting yourself out of IVF jail. We have one, realizing that your IVF jail cell is not your worst nightmare but something that can make your dreams come true. Two, unlocking your jail cell is as easy as just opening up the door because there is no lock. 
And three, unlocking your jail cell is looking at your past as a very expensive and valuable education that has made you much wiser today. Overall, education is necessary for growth. And if you are not growing every day, you are going to be stuck in your own jail cell called life. So I challenge you to keep learning and growing for yourself, your life, and your freedom. Overall, education is necessary for growth. And if you are not growing every day and learning every day, you are just stuck in your own jail cell called a shitty life. So I challenge you to keep learning and growing for yourself, your life, and your freedom. And that was my baby making lesson of the day. For more of my fertility advice and adventures, please visit TashaBlasi.com. Sending you thanks and love always.